This world is not my home, I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open doors, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just over in glory land, we'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their songs of sweetest praise drift back from heaven's shore, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what shall I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. All right, good morning, Retreat United Methodist Church. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And uh, it's a lot of reasons for joy, especially off the week we just had, uh, in terms of kids in our churches. Uh, with the Wednesday Warrior Program on Wednesday, we had a contemporary service at Liberty Pole that night. And then yesterday here at Retreat at the Sportsman Club, it was packed with kids from the community. What a blessing it is to see all these people coming from out of nowhere and all these kids that we're trying to raise up as leaders in our community to have a foundation of faith so they can step into their calling when they get older, grow and develop. <laughs> it's been a blessing. Uh, but also, uh, between our nursing home service, Tom and I went down to Thornton. We seem to be a, what, the traveling band yeah. down there. <laughs> and uh, it's just a, a really, really good week of ministry. So anyways, I'm coming with, with full heart and uh, tired eyes. Uh, my niece stayed over last night. Uh, my niece. Chloe, uh, I have dog. I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> she's uh, a little bit young, I, I don't want to say an age because I'm wrong, too, I get my fingers too, so my dogs are always up barking and trying to talk to her and wake her up, <laughs> good lord, anyways, <laughs> anyways, but is there any announcements we want to lift up for this week, I know we have our newsletter due, uh, deadline due tomorrow. Bible study at noon at New Hope, Wednesday Warriors at 3.30. There's a Liberty Pole Bible study at 4.15. Food Pantry 9 to 11 on Thursday as well. So, anyway, I know uh, I talked with Tara yesterday for a little bit afterwards, and, and she said she is planning on doing it again next month. Uh, so I'll try it one more time. It was really, really, really cool to see all the leaders we had from our churches that were there to help. That uh, The option to go sledding, uh, I was down there taking them down sleds down the big hill. I've got cuts and bruises. Those kids were whizzing into the woods way faster than they probably should have been. And a lot of laughs and smiles. There's horses brought out from the community out here they could sit on and ride. Uh, they also made cupcakes they could decorate. There's board games and puzzles they could play together. Uh, we did a short little Bible lesson where the kids acted out the Good Samaritan. Uh, we made hot chocolate and served them some food. It's a good, healthy environment. The atmosphere was of faith, and, and it was uplifting for our kids. So. Anyways, I won't ramble on too much about that, but I'm excited to see where that grows. Uh, thank you for all that have helped and, and pitched in with that. So, anyways, nothing else. Let us open up with the preparation of our hearts. God, I give you my heart, my mind, and my attention. Help me listen to your calling for me today. I'm walking in here, ready to receive your spirit. I'm walking out of here, changing for the better. Amen. First hymn today is on 534, Be Still My Soul. Be still my soul, the Lord is on your side. Be patient.
your youth is renewed like the eagles. Let us pray together the opening prayer. It's a little bit long. <laughs> Father, I know that you have a plan for each of our lives, and I understand that the main desire for every one of your children is to know you more, more and more and live in our lives in a manner that is pleasing to you and exalts your holy name. Help me, I pray, to face the challenges of life, looking to Jesus and relying on his sufficient strength and grace. Help me not to repay evil for evil, but to love my enemies and to do good despitefully use me. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's a little bit of reading. <laughs> uh, now's the time for uh, joys and concerns. Is there anything we want to lift up to the throne of grace? I'll go first. Uh, it was an absolute blessing to, to recognize we had an 88th birthday out there from Miss Artis Still, Stillwell. Stillwell. So happy birthday, Artis. I know she's watching our stream today, so uh, it's a blessing to have you with us here in spirit. And happy birthday. You mind if we sing her happy birthday there, Tom? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear artist. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Thank you. Anything else? Yes. Oh, just wanted to say thank you to everybody who helped out yesterday. It turned out really well. We had 27 kids and 44 people total at the sports <coughs> you've been called today. <laughs> Probably. It hasn't been up that long. <laughs> oh, man. Dave's still young. How young you are, are you turning? 40. All right. <laughs> I've, been, I've been 40 for 28 years. Who's the man? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, happy birthday, Mr. Terry. Anything else want to lift up? Yes. I have an MRI, my routine MRI tomorrow, so. Mm -hmm. All right. What 
time is that? Uh, 8.45. Okay. All right. Anything else? Yes. My sister Joan has her last chemo treatment on Tuesday, we hope. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's a milestone. She's been going through a lot. Last treatment. Amen. Uh, I got a phone call this week. There's a, a lady that I used to serve with in church who just got a real bad news for uh, cancer. So she's put on hospice. Her name is Sherry Butts, and we could keep her in our prayers. So it's a blessing. Uh, my family's been able to come up. Uh, we spent the day out yesterday. I uh, went out to eat, and that was an absolute blessing. Uh, they're going to try and meet all three churches. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> we don't live very close to each other anymore, so they'll try and, you know, uh, figure out where I'm at. <laughs> I always get these extra sets of grandparents wherever I go, it seems like, and <laughs> kind of meeting the extended church family. So, Amen. Uh, that's my mom, Danielle, and my dad, John. So, All right. Is there anything else? Let us go to the throne of grace. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the gift of today. Not only the warmth of the hearts around us, but Lord, it's going to be 50 degrees and that's not going underappreciated. <laughs> Lord, uh, we, we thank you for the growth, uh, not only in our faith, but also the growth that uh, you've placed with our, the leaders in our community. We get to help raise these kids up in a happy, healthy way and grow in faith with you. Lord, we thank you for all the programs we've got going on, whether it's after Wednesday, whether it's uh, contemporary services, or even just a, a community today where kids can come and have fun in a healthy atmosphere. Work through these kids, Lord. Be at work in their hearts and minds and help them step into the calling you have for them, for this next generation. Lord, we've got a lot of birthdays. Happy birthday to Artis and uh, Terry. Lord, we pray that you give them another year of blessings and opportunities and, and growth, Lord. Lord. Let it be a good year. Lord, we are thankful that you have been with Joan and her walk. This entire uh, road to recovery, all her treatments, all her procedures, all those trips to the doctors, Lord. She's not wavered. You've been with her. Lord, we pray for progress. We pray for restoration in her health. Lord, help us celebrate this treatment with her. Lord, we lift up Miss Marla. She goes in for an MRI tomorrow. Lord, we pray for uh, anxiety she might have. Lord, we pray that if she gets to see some progress, you place her in front of the right staffs. Lord, we thank you for her gift that she is, uh, the blessing she is to this church. Lord, if you could lift up uh, the Butsons as Sherry's going into uh, this transition. Lord, give her the peace she needs and the comfort when life is bleak. Lord, wrap her up in your loving arms, hold her together. Lord, even though we said all these things out loud, we, we pray that you hear our prayers in our hearts and our minds, and we know that you hear every single one of them. In your name we pray. Amen. All righty. So our next hymn is on 164, Come My Way, My Truth, My Life. Before? No, me neither. I've never seen that song. <laughs> oh. 
Oh my lord. Be a better Methodist every day. All right, so our scripture today, we're changing it up a little bit. Uh, we've been talking about the teachings of Christ. He's been going a lot of different places and giving a lot of messages to different crowds, helping them grow in, in God's kingdom. And he's spreading a new gospel, and it's refreshing. And, and it's refreshing if you don't have to hear about it, I guess, every single Sunday for three months straight. So I'm going to change it up, just give you a breather, and we'll come back to it real, real soon. Uh, this passage today is still from a United Methodist lectionary, so we're still where we need to be in terms of like a worldwide denomination. And, and it's the very end of a story here uh, of the life of Joseph. And you guys might know Joseph from that, that cartoon, that play that's, that's happening all the time, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Yeah, a lot of high schools do it, it's, uh, professional actors do it. it. It's a biblical story about Joseph. And there's something about his story that makes him unique. And it helps us grow in our faith, too. We can learn a little bit about his character, and his character is applicable for us. Because if we can have a similar character, we can overcome adversity. We can go through hardships with a different perspective. There's something that makes Joseph almost like a Christ figure in the Old Testament. And if you look at some of the patterns that happen with him, it's almost identical to what happens with Jesus. He gets thrown out for no reason cast aside from his family and loved ones. He goes through these hardships. He's fairly treated. He's put in bad situations. We see him in this scenario today where he even says some of the words that Jesus says. And that's really, really cool. It goes to show that if we have a character like Joseph, that we can also have a character like Jesus, and it changes our life. So then Joseph can no longer control himself before all the attendants, and he cried out, Have everyone leave my presence. So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. And he wept loudly that the Egyptians heard him, and Pharaoh's household heard about it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him, because they were terrified at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now, do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here, because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years, there has been famine in the land. And for the next five years, there will be no plowing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by great deliverance. So then it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh. Lord of the entire household and ruler of all Egypt. Now hurry back to my father and say to him, This is what your son Joseph says. God made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Don't delay. You shall live in the region of Geshen and be near to me. You, your children, your grandchildren, your flocks and your herds, and all you have. I will provide for you here, there, because five years of famine are still going to come. Otherwise, you and your household and all who belong to you will become destitute. You can see for yourselves, and so can my brother Benjamin, that it is I, really I who am speaking for you. Tell my father about all the honor according to me in Egypt and about everything you have seen, and bring my father down here quickly. Oh, then he threw his arms around his brother Benjamin and wept, and Benjamin embraced him, weeping. He kissed all his brothers and wept over them. Afterward, his brothers talked with him. So, word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Not for the glory of Patri. <laughs> there. We went to one of our favorite burger places. We love food and wanted to take our family up there. And we, we went to say grace before the meal. It's me, Alyssa, my niece, my two-year-old niece, my sister, and my parents. And they bring the food out. And before we go to eat, we say grace. And after we get done praying, I look up, and there is that finger of that two-year-old wagging at me with a scowl. 
Carter, you didn't pray right. You didn't do it right. Carter, pray again. What do you mean I didn't pray right? I told her. She said, you have to put your hands together and go down like this. I just took my hat off and prayed. So I don't know what, what you can take away from a man who got scowled at about prayer from a two-year-old today. but Oh, gosh, it was cute. That's one of the stories I'm going to remember. Anyways. There was a, a grandson who went to go visit his grandparents out in uh, rural Georgia. And he lives in a cabin. It's a little isolated. And he drives out there to go meet him for the, for the day. He comes out for breakfast, and the grandpa makes bacon and eggs. He puts it on the plate. They sit down together, and they're eating breakfast together. And, and the, the grandson says, Grandpa, these plates look kind of dirty. I mean, there's still some spots on here. He says, uh, you know what? I do the best that I can with cold water. Okay, cold water, might not be able to get it all. He looks past it, eats his food, carries on. Well, after the morning's over, it's time for lunch, and, and they're serving hamburgers. But on these plates, you can almost see little pieces of the eggs that he had in the morning. And he says, Grandpa, these plates look dirty. Are you sure they're getting clean? He says, well, I, I do what I can with cold water. Oh, my goodness, he says. Well, he eats the burger, doesn't think anything of it, and goes to pack up his stuff so that way he can head out for the road, get back home. And as he walks out the front door, he gets to his car, and there's a big growling dog staring at him. And he says, Grandpa, there's a dog out here, and it doesn't look very friendly. Hold on a minute, said Grandpa. He walks out the front door, looks at the dog, points, and says, Cold water, you knock that off right now. <laughs> That's gross. <laughs> That's gross. That's not a good one. Anyways. <coughs> Uh, sometimes humor opens up the heart. but So we are picking up, if you want to go back to the first slide, Jeff, we're picking up to the very uh, end of the story of Joseph here. This is almost the end of what happens with him and his brothers. And up to this point in Genesis, I'll give you a little tutorial of Genesis, there's a lot of sibling rivalry that happens in Genesis. It's a pattern that happens again and again and again. Cain and Abel, they didn't see eye to eye with one another over worship. You know what happens with them. Then we have Jacob and Esau, they didn't see eye to eye over a birthright. We know what happens to them. The very next thing we get is Joseph and his brothers. And just like the ones that have gone before him, they also don't see eye to eye. Uh, so there's this pattern that happens in Genesis, and it's really, really cool. Joseph had 11 older brothers, all older, and they came from a different mother. So Jacob had two wives, Leah and Rachel. He married Leah, but he really loved Rachel. And he tried for a child with Rachel for as long as he could, and she was not able to, to bear a child. So they tried again and again and again, and out came son after son after son from Leah. But finally, he gets Joseph here, Joseph from Rachel. And, and he loved Joseph. He treated him special. But the brothers knew about this. Uh, the brothers knew that he loved one wife a little bit more, and, and he saw the favoritism that he displayed to them, and, and that caused a little bit of si sibling rivalry. I guess if there's an underlining tone, I guess a lesson that could be learned from this, don't let your arguments as a, a couple in a marriage, don't let it spill into your kids. Joseph was mistreated from the very day that he was born. Every single day that he walked around, he, he was mistreated by his brothers. They didn't like him. They went out of their way to be rude to him. They didn't show him any breaks at all. All because they let that relationship from their marriage spill into their children. You know, they, they had no reason to think less of him. But because Joseph favored Rachel, he was mistreated. So anyways, Joseph, we know he had a very hard life. He was growing up with a little bit extra struggles. He had more strife than the regular person just because the household that he lived in wasn't one that was a healthy atmosphere. He was constantly looking around. He was constantly being ridiculed by his brothers. Life was not easy from Joseph from the minute that he was born. But it gets way worse for a little bit more. He doesn't seem to catch a break. Maybe sometimes in life we can find ourselves very similar spots to Joseph because even when things aren't fair for us and when it seems like we're being misfairly treated, things aren't going our way, we can't catch a break, God still has a purpose for it. He can still commission it, bless the situation that we're in and transform it into something beautiful. And if there's something that you catch today, I hope it's that you keep the faith that God is still in control, that even though things look bad right now, God's not done yet, and watch and see what he does when I put my best effort into everything that I have. So Joseph, he's mistreated by his brothers, and actually they went to uh, the point where they were going to kill him. So they bring him a far ways away, they're out in the pasture, and, and they end up selling him to some slave traders. Well, we need to get rid of him. Dad loves him more. We'll, we'll fix this problem by get, getting rid of him. 
So we know that what happens next, the slave traders, they pick him up, they take him all the way over to Egypt, where there he's living a completely different life. You know, they thought they were getting rid of him, but what they were really doing is launching him into the next point where God was going to use him. They thought that they were going to end this situation, that Joseph's life, he would no longer be around. God took him and brought him somewhere better without them realizing it. Understand that even when things look horrible for us, God still has a fun way of rearranging things, using them as launching points that propel us into our next season. And Joseph's got a really, really cool season that's going to happen. So he's sold into Egypt, and he's working for a guy named Potiphar, and Potiphar was an official for the Pharaoh. So he's pretty high in the food chain. But Joseph's job for Potiphar was just to do small tasks. And we've got to remember, he's just been uh, shipped off by his family. Persecuted by his loved ones. They sent him away. He's in this household doing small chores, cleaning the house, tidying the, the house, keeping it looking up and running. Well, he, he's not in a good mindset. But he doesn't let that weigh him down. You see, everything that he does here, I'm in chapter 39, it says everything he does, he does for the Lord to the best of his ability. He had every reason to hang his head down low. Life has not gone my way all my life. I've never caught a break. But he says, I'm going to do what I can, whether it's big or small, and I'm going to glorify the Lord with it. So he does this. It says here, now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, an Egyptian, was one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, who brought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. The Lord was with Joseph, so he prospered. And he lived in the house of his Egyptian master, it goes on to say, Joseph found favor in his eyes, and he became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of all the household, and he entrusted to his care everything that he owned. Joseph was put in a bad situation to a worse situation, but he never wavered. He didn't give up his faith. He looked to the Lord, and it glorified him in all tasks, big or small, and God blessed it. He blessed it even when he didn't want to be there. He transformed that household into something godly. And Joseph himself was being propelled even further to where God needed him to be. So after a while, there's something that happens in that household. You know he gets accused uh, of adultery. He gets misaccused. Nothing happened there, but he was again mistreated. Life again was not fair to him. He gets shipped over to prison. He seems to be going worse and worse and worse all these steps in his life, but everywhere that he goes, he brings God with him. And it says, while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him and showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the Lord. Joseph woke up in that prison cell each and every day, and he made his best efforts to build on the relationships of those around him. To talk about God and what he was doing through him. Joseph had talents that he wasn't afraid to not use. He talked about dreams. He talked about faith. That prison became a church. When he had every reason to wallow in the cell, he got up and said, I'm going to make the most of where I'm at today. I'm going to serve the Lord with everything I do, and God's going to bless it. And God did bless it. Joseph's uh, ministry in that prison cell got news all the way up to the Pharaoh for deciphering dreams. From there, he was propelled into the kingdom, into the palace, and he did some works through the, the Pharaoh. And he gets appointed as a head official here. The brothers thought they were shipping him out. What they were really doing was launching him into where he was supposed to be. And Joseph, every step of the way, though he could have held his head low, chose to stand tall in his faith, and God blessed him. God transformed a dirty situation into something beautiful. And we get to see this reconciliation between him and his brothers here. So Joseph is going to see his brothers for the first time. These are the people who shipped him off. These are the people who mistreated him, who made life way harder than it had to be. He could have had every right to, to come and greet them with anger. If you think about it, it's a common thought that he would have been thinking about them a long time when all these bad things were happening. It's something he could have had on his heart. I'm frustrated with them. I can't believe they did this to me. But he doesn't. And actually, we get to learn the story about not holding grudges because had he held on to that anger, maybe he wouldn't have been able to glorify the Lord in a way that he did. He was able to drop all that feelings, all those bad emotions, and be used by the fullest of God. So it says Joseph could no longer control himself. There was a famine. His brothers came up to the land. Little did they know they were going to come and see their brother. They come and ask him for some food. Have, have everyone leave my presence. So Joseph said, I can't take this anymore. I need to let you know who I am. So there is no more, no one with Joseph. He let him know. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? They had no idea they were talking to their brother. 
But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified in his presence. They had good reasons to be terrified. They're, they're looking at the, the guy that they've thrown out of, of the family. They're looking at the guy they mistreated, misused. And now this guy is a high official for all of Egypt. He's the one making all the decisions. And we did him wrong. This is what it goes on to say the next one here. It says, come close to me. Jesus says that to his disciples. When Jesus comes back from the grave, he comes to his disciples. They don't believe it's him. He says, come close to me. Jesus does that too. He says, it is I. And, and when he says, come close to me, I'll show you. He, he's often showing them scars that they might have inflicted. Or birthmarks that they might also have from their father. So then we go up to this next one. Uh, oh, next one there, please. And do not be distressed. Do not be angry with yourselves. This is something that we can take away too. You guys should not be upset. You shouldn't be distressed. I have forgiven you a long time ago. If I have forgiven you, then you should forgive yourselves. Maybe they were carrying a burden with them their entire lives. Joseph didn't carry it with them, and he was able to be used in a way that God had planned for him. So it says, because I was here to save me, and God sent me ahead of you. What I want to talk about today is a transition that happens in this passage. There's something that happens in this passage. Joseph is talking about all the things that his brothers did to him. And there's a transition where it says, but God sent me ahead of you. But God sent me ahead of you. You sold me into slavery. You caused me to work for a man in a household. You caused me to go to jail. You caused me to be all these different hardships. But God has blessed me. But God is the one who sent me here. Even though you've done it to me, God has used me while I was there, and he's propelled me to where I was supposed to be anyways. You know, if we're going through something today, it's real easy for us to be in just like Joseph. You know, life isn't fair. We didn't catch good breaks. But guess what? We still have a God who blesses us right where we're at, and maybe, maybe we're where we need to be for God to use us. Who needs to feel his presence today? Who needs to feel this positive love? God can use you right where you're at. Here in the book of James, it says, Consider a pure joy, brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kind, because you know that it's the testing of your faith that produces perseverance. Testing of your faith produces perseverance. Then it goes on to say, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because you have received the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. There's a, a cool process when it comes to uh, getting gold out of the earth. If you guys know anything about gold? I did not know very much about this, but this week. When you dig up gold, it's, real, it's not pretty. It's actually kind of ugly when you pull it out of the dirt. Uh, it's got a lot of impurities. It's not one big block like we think. We don't wear it like we would. It doesn't look anything like our jewelry. But how to get gold to purify, how to get it to look like it does when it's in the stores, is, is quite a process, actually. You, you have to wash off all the dirt. Then you have to heat it up to 2,000 degrees. Then you have to purify all the impurities that come out of it melt away. And after all this big, long process, you have something beautiful. In that same way, this life kind of goes and gives us trials that purify us. They make our faith stronger. It, it melts away all the things that aren't supposed to be there in the first place. And by the end of it, we get to come and live in a life with Christ. And that's beautiful. I'm going to leave you with one last verse here, and then I'm <laughs> dumb rambling here. Uh, in 28, it says, Romans 8, 28, And we know that all things... God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. In all things, not just when life seems like it's going easy, like it's going the way that we want and it's, it's going according to plan, but even when we're going through bad days and struggles that we just can't wrap our minds around, God still is going to purpose it, bless it, transform it, and bring, uh, bring, bring you to a place where you're supposed to be. Maybe our trials that we're going through right now are a launching point that brings us into the next season where God has plans to use us. Don't undervalue where you're at today. Maybe you can grow where you're planted. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we pray that wherever we're at today, good or bad, Lord, that you bless us. Lord, help us do everything we, we can, big or small, to glorify you. Help us make the best impact with where we're at today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All righty. Our next one, tithes and offerings. May the ushers please come forward.
blessings on these tithes and offerings for your ministry here at Retreat United Methodist Church. Lord, help us be the best disciples that we can to make the impact that you have called us to make and be an influential source of your love for those that desperately need to feel it. Lord, we pray that all this in the same way your son Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of forever. Amen. Amen. All right, our last hymn today is Pass It On, 572. takes a star to get the fire going and soon all those around can warm up to its glowing that's how it is with God's love what you've experienced it you spread his love Sometimes even when life isn't going our way, God still has a plan to bless it, use it, transform it into something beautiful. Maybe he's got you here for a reason for growing. Maybe you're here for others. Anyways, hold on to your faith even when life gets hard and watch and see what God does with it. 